Just coming up on 620 on this Thursday morning. Thrilled to have, uh, well, I guess we call you quote unquote former president and CEO of the uh, Vancouver Organizing Committee for the 2010 Olympic Games. Welcome, John Furlong. Good morning. Thank Good you morning. for getting up extra early for us before you have the big breakfast this it was morning. Up earlier back then. <laughs> You're right. Can you, when you reflect on uh, five years ago, today in particular, what stands out the most for you? Um, you know this. I mean, I, on this at this very moment, yes. back then it was this extraordinary feeling of anticipation. Uh, I got up that morning and really thought something profound was going to happen. That all of the years of planning and building and working with people and and that it, we had just sort of come around the corner and it was all about to start. That positive anxiety was quite remarkable. It felt like today was going to be a day like absolutely no other I had ever experienced, our team had ever experienced, and. I remember getting up that morning and, and being um, picked up by a Canadian military driver who had done two tours of ex Afghanistan and driving to the hotel for our first team meeting of the day that the games were starting. And everyone had that look in their eye that they were they were about to give the performance of a lifetime. And that memory is it's, it was amazing because we had worked for so long and all that planning and grinding and and the concerns that came everybody worried about security oh, and how are we going to get around yes. the city it's going to take you an hour to go where well, it used to take we you five minutes that we would have to let the work do the talking because all you can do is talk up to the games we spent all our time talking about everything that we had done and planned and we're you know obviously getting from time to time you get second guessed about the decisions you made but here we are and now the event is going to have to speak for itself and, um, and we were we were ready to go so counting down to the event and as most people realize and and certainly if they didn't before five years ago today they did realize that training runs for some events began before the opening ceremonies and talk us through this story Yes, well, on the on the morning of of the games, um, obviously we were getting ready to go, and on, on, and uh, the training run had begun uh, for the losers. And this is a picture here of Nodar Kumar Tashvili, who was about to have his training run, which, as everyone now knows, ended in a terrible tragedy. And Nodar came, um, you know, to Vancouver with the hopes and dreams of his of his family, and and uh, and and was killed on, the, on that morning through that accident. This is a picture of Nodar's death. Uh, from, from Bakrawani and this photograph here uh, which he's holding up was blown up uh, on a poster above Nodar's bed which we saw there when we went to his funeral at the end of the Paralympics and we realized you know during the whole, every day of the games while well, everyone in Canada was euphoric that this was a family that was going through this terrible grief and it was a, a obviously a, a, an awfully challenging day and it was one of those days that I don't think any of us and I, I couldn't have contemplated that wouldn't have been prepared to contemplate what happened and from that moment on everything of course had changed and yet you went forward of course having to uh, you know put on this great performance uh, and well, and help all of these people who had worked so hard put these games together and, and well, here you we went are. that morning was like no other we obviously had to respond to this and and it, it was not lost on us that the Canadian public would have enormous expectations of us and that they would expect us to behave in a manner that fitted their grief and their compassion and empathy and so the press conference obviously that morning was very difficult and we had to almost recalibrate the entire opening ceremonies and you know with the picture of the Georgia team coming in the stadium and how the Canadian fans reacted to them and and we just decided you know we we, we, we wanted the people of Georgia uh, to feel the compassion of the people of the country so our responsibility was to try to do that and and uh, we did our best it was an incredibly difficult day must have been and on top of that but clearly not to that degree you were also dealing with mother nature at that point which we're seeing now on the local mountains trucking in snow helicoptering in snow people up there working so hard to make sure this came together we have some visuals of that well the, the interesting thing about Cyprus and trying to prepare that mountain is when we got to January 1st there was no snow on Cyprus and we lost confidence in mother nature it was almost like God was looking down at us and saying you know anybody can put on the Winter Olympics with snow try doing it with no snow <laughs> with no and snow. so you can see here the trucks that we the solution we found was to we had to do a number of things, but what we were doing here is we were taking we were going up to Manning Park right. with as many trucks and vehicles and people as we could find. We were loading these trucks up. We were driving the snow 110 kilometers down the highway, up the mountain, and then putting it in place. And it always struck me when we were talking about this project that people it was really hard to describe the size of what we were doing. We were it's not like we were putting snow on a soccer field. We were covering a mountain. 
to a standard necessary for the Olympic Games. And there are three or four stadia up there, uh, people coming and going every day. It was a monster challenge. But it, to me, this really defined uh, what the organizing committee was about. The people on our team were simply not prepared to fail. They right. just, it was unacceptable. We would never have been forgiven. And we would have been the only country to miss staging an event at the Olympics. So that to me is, uh, that this is a very precious picture of, of what was going on behind the scenes while everybody was getting ready to have a great party. And a great party it was, particularly when mm, the men's hockey team made us go crazy like this. Yes, and what I think was really special about this is because when you when you stand back from this, first of all, this was a euphoric moment from the country like nothing we'd ever experienced before. But when you stand back from it and you ask yourself, well, it was just a goal. Why was it so important? Well, it was so important really because I think at that moment, it was almost like every Canadian got a stick on that puck. It was like we were all on the ice. We had lived this experience. We weren't spectating anymore. You know, volunteers, people on the streets, people working together. We had lived every second of this and we were having this moment when Canada was about to win its 14th gold medal uh, best by any country ever still holds as a record and it was almost like it was justice for all the things that had happened all the challenges overcoming all the adversity and it was a moment that I think will live in everybody's mind for forever I mean 28 million or so Canadians saw some of the game on on television so it's very very special moment at the end of the games and to me it was sort of that reminder that in life if you give life everything you have every single day good things will ultimately come to you absolutely perfect point to say thank you for coming in and sharing your memories with us I hope you have a wonderful day we all here at breakfast television hope that you are celebrated today as you deserve thank you so much thank John you. Furlong for being much. here with yeah. us